Since you ask me for a story of lonesome trails and high noons, where the skies go on forever and so do the fight scenes, it so happens I've got one. It all began after my successful attempt to become the first man to cross the Atlantic by horse. <laughs> which I must tell you all about some previous time. <laughs> now, try as he might, a man cannot succeed in such an endeavour without the following consequences. He will be in America with a horse. <laughs> Mine was my favourite steed and the constant companion of my childhood, Mr Floofy Whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so called because I'd really wanted a cat and had raised him as such. <laughs> You know what it's like when you've done a long trip. You never really want to just turn round and go back the same way. So Mr. Floofy Whiskers and I decided to walk the rest of the way around the world. <laughs> we set off from New York that very afternoon and maintained a good pace. And so by evening we were in Arizona. <laughs> Looking for food and board, we moseyed in to a sleepy little one-horse town at a stroke, turning it into a two-horse town. <laughs> Fine, or a one-horse town with a big cat in it. <laughs> as I walked up to the town saloon bar, it was deathly silent within. But as I reached the doors... <laughs> everybody began talking, and the pianist started playing. I, I couldn't help feeling a little insulted, frankly. I made my way to the bar and attempted to attract the landlady's attention. Hello, I'm looking... Hello, I'm, I'm looking for... Excuse me. Oh! Simmer down. Sorry about that. We always do that when strangers come in. We're trying to encourage tourism. <laughs> see. Anyway, howdy, stranger. Uh, very well, thank you. How deep? <laughs> see, we don't take kindly to strangers in these parts. No, no, no. Lucky, remember, we changed the slogan. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> we take kindly to strangers in these parts. <laughs> What can I get you? A bourbon on the rocks and a bucket of milk for my horse. Your horse drinks milk? It's a long story. <laughs> well, look at Mr. Fancy Dan Stranger here with the milk-drinking horse. <laughs> hey! Anyone else here got a problem with me giving milk to my horse? Well, mister, since you ask, I'm the town vet. <laughs> and, uh, well, cow's milk is too fatty for horses. It'll give him diarrhea. That was it. I am a mild-mannered man, but one thing I will not take from strangers is sensible veterinary advice. <laughs> With that, the fight was on. After that punch, he punched me, and then I punched him back. Then he tried to punch me again, but I ducked, and then I punched him again. But then a second guy came up behind me, and he punched me, and then I punched him, and then I punched the first guy again. Then the second guy... Okay. The, the thing is, it was exciting at the time. <laughs> Obviously, it's not all that interesting to have described to you. Uh, I, I tell you what, let's just say we all punched each other for ages and really absolutely ages, and then at the end we all decided I'd won. See, stranger, you're real good at punching people and being punched by people and sometimes ducking. Yeah, you sure are. We need someone like you to take on Big Bad Bob. I'd heard the name. If what folks said was true, he was as big as he was bad. And as bad as he was Bob. <laughs> if what folks said wasn't true, then I had no idea what he was like. <laughs> what does a man like that want from a one-horse town like this? Our horse. <laughs> yep. He's coming for it tomorrow. Twenty past noon. Twenty past? Yeah, why? I don't know, it just seems a bit... Never mind. <laughs> You'll just have to give him your horse. We can't do it, mister. We ain't got no horse. We ain't never had a horse. We just pretended to have one so we didn't look bad in front of the other towns. <laughs> what do you do when people from other towns visit? We tell them the horse has a migraine. <laughs> and had to go to bed. If they look suspicious, one of us goes upstairs and walks around in horseshoes. <laughs> Why would a horse be sleeping in a bedroom? It's not a real horse, mister. <laughs> so what about it? Will you help us out? We'll give you a hundred bucks. I don't know. I'm just passing through. I don't want any trouble. I mean, you say that, but you did just beat us all up because I advised you not to give your horse milk. <laughs> oh, very well. I'll do your dirty work, but I don't want your badge. You don't want a badge? No, I don't. Oh, okay, that works out fine, because we weren't going to give you a badge. <laughs> well, good. I mean, what would the badge even say? I don't know. Something like... I fought Big Bad Bob and I was a very brave boy. Hey, 
we won't give you one of them. I mean, fine, if you've had it made already. Oh, we haven't. Just a sticker would do. Nope. Fine, well, I'll just, I'll do it for nothing then. Yeah, I mean, we offered you 100 bucks. I don't want 100 bucks, I wanted a badge. You said you didn't want a badge. I was lying. (laughs) Seems to me a man could buy a lot of badges for 100 bucks. It's not the same if you buy it yourself. (laughs) Well, in this life, a man's got to do what a man's got to do, or a man can't have any pudding. (laughs) The next day, I saddled up, Mr. Fluffy Whiskers. (laughs) Noob! And rode out onto Main Street on the stroke of noon. I like to be early for appointments. It's just polite. At the stroke of twenty past noon, a stranger arrived. That was fine. On time is fine. It's just lateness I can't stand. Well, I said, I suppose you must be the one they call Big Bad Bob. Something like that? And who are you? I'm the guy who's here to tell you that horse you've come for, you can't have it. I can't have it. You heard me. Oh, I wish they'd let me know that before I set out here. What do you mean they, they told you to come here? Well, of course. You think I just turn up to random towns at 20 past noon on the off chance? They said they had a horse for me. Take the Englishman's horse! That was our plan all along. Sure was. Oh, now, wait a minute. This isn't their horse to give. <laughs> yes, I know, Mr. Foofy Whiskers. There's not time to get into that right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bob. I've had this horse since he was a kitten. (laughs) If you want him, you're going to have to fight me for him. Yeah, fight him! Don't worry, Bob, he's terrible. We let him win, but it took ages. Now, (laughs) Now, don't fret, stranger. I ain't going to fight you for your horse. What are you going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go away. (laughs) Go away? Yeah, obviously you don't want to sell me your horse. Fine, I'll go and try and buy one somewhere else. I wish folks would stop assuming I'm some kind of psychopath just because I'm a big guy with a deep voice and black hats happen to flatter my skin tone. (laughs) But if what people say is true, you are as bad as you are Bob. Okay, then. What people say isn't true. Do you know what I even considered that? Listen, mister... (laughs) I'm just a traveling artisan trying to get my wares to Flagstaff. My horse died on the way. I'd like to buy or rent another one. That's it. I'm just generally in the market for a horse. <laughs> oh, you, you take a rental? Yeah, of course I'll take a rental. And, and an artisan, you say? Well, what's your trade? Oh, nothing that would interest you as it happens. Uh, I'm a professional badge maker. <laughs> Are you? Sure. That's why they call me Big Badge Bob. (laughs) And so, stranger, that's why I wear this battered tin star that simply reads, I rented Bob my horse. (laughs) And I was a very brave boy. (laughs) Good night.